The legacy of The Wizard of Oz is as enchanting as it is tragic, especially when we examine the fates of its iconic cast. Recently, the passing of Munchkin actress Betty and Bruno at 91 has reignited interest in what became of the stars from the beloved 1939 film. While some enjoyed flourishing careers, others faced tumultuous lives marked by struggles and heartbreak. Most notably, Judy Garland, who portrayed Dorothy, experienced a devastating fall from grace. After rising to fame at just 16, she battled severe drug and alcohol addictions that ultimately led to her untimely death from an accidental overdose at 47. Despite her immense talent and the joy she brought to audiences, Garland's life was marred by the pressures of stardom and exploitation by the very industry that made her famous. The film also featured a talented ensemble cast, including the Wicked Witch of the West, Glinda, the Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Cowardly Lion. While some cast members continued to thrive in Hollywood, others struggled to find their footing after the film's success. Many stepped out of the spotlight entirely or turned to different careers. Betty and Bruno herself transitioned into journalism after her role in The Wizard of Oz, showcasing a different path from her fellow cast members. Her recent death serves as a poignant reminder of the passage of time and the lasting impact of this classic film. As we remember these stars, it's essential to reflect on both their contributions to cinema and the personal battles they faced. The story behind The Wizard of Oz is not just one of magic and adventure, it's also a tale of resilience amidst adversity. Dorothy, played by Judy Garland Judy, born in 1922 in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, was only 16 years old when she was cast as Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. The young actress blew almost everyone away with her performance, which earned her an Academy Juvenile Award and turned her into one of the most sought-after stars on the globe practically overnight. Within one year of its release, she had landed three more movie roles, Andy Hardy Meets Debutante, Strike Up the Band, and Little Nellie Kelly. During the 40s, she starred in a slew of other films like the musical flick For Me and My Gal, alongside Gene Kelly, the comedy presenting Lily Mars, Meet Me in St. Louis, the drama The Clock, and The Harvey Girls. But in 1947, while filming the movie The Pirate, Judy suffered from a nervous breakdown and attempted suicide, which resulted in her being sent to a treatment center. While Judy appeared in the popular musical movie Easter Parade one year after that, things continued to spiral for her, and she soon developed a severe drug and alcohol addiction. She was cast in the 1949 flick The Barclays of Broadway, but after missing several days of shooting due to her continued partying, she was replaced by Ginger Rogers. The former child star was also forced to drop out of Annie Get Your Gun that same year. Judy was eventually sent to a hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, where she underwent electroconvulsive therapy for depression and was weaned off the drugs. However, after she was cast in the 1950 movie Summer Stock, she started taking pills again in an attempt to lose weight, and later that year, she was once again kicked out of a movie this time, it was the flick Royal Wedding, after she failed to show up to set multiple times. The Wizard of Oz alum attempted suicide a second time in 1950 and parted ways with MGM Studios soon after that. She made many appearances on Bing Cosby's radio show between 1950 and 1951 while taking a break from acting. She then embarked on a four-month concert tour across the UK, which was wildly successful. In 1954, she returned to the big screen to star in A Star is Born, for which she received the Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Despite its success, she focused most of her time on performing in the following years. One of her most notable performances came in 1961, when she sang to a sold-out crowd at Carnegie Hall. A live recording of the show was released later that year, which spent 13 weeks at number one on the Billboard chart and won her four Grammy Awards. She landed a few more acting roles during the 60s, including the courtroom drama Judgment at Nuremberg, which garnered another Oscar nom, and the drama A Child is Waiting. In 1962, she launched her own weekly talk show, called The Judy Garland Show, which earned her a $24 million paycheck from CBS, equivalent to $167 million as of 2021. However, during the late 60s, it was revealed that Judy was $500,000 in debt after her managers, Freddie Fields and David Bagelman, 
parted ways with her, and allegedly took almost all of her earnings. Her final acting role came in 1963, when she starred in I Could Go On Singing. She sadly passed away in June of 1969 from an accidental barbiturate overdose. As for her love life, she married musician David Rose in 1941, when she was only 19, but it was short-lived, and they split just two years later. The star then tied the knot with director Vincente Minnelli, who she met on set of Meet Me in St. Louis in 1945, and together, they welcomed a daughter named Liza Minnelli. Their marriage also ended in divorce in 1951. She wed for a third time in 1952, marrying her tour manager and producer, Sidney Luft, and they had another daughter named Lorna Luft later that year, followed by a son named Joey Luft in 1955. They went their separate ways in 1963, and afterwards, she claimed he had been physically abusive to her during their marriage. She then tied the knot with her tour promoter Mark Heron in 1965, but they separated five months later. The star married her fifth husband, a nightclub manager named Mickey Deans, in 1969, just months before her passing. The Wizard of Oz, played by Frank Morgan Frank Morgan, who was born in 1890 in New York City, played a total of six roles in The Wizard of Oz, Frank Morgan who was born in 1890 in New York City, played a total of six roles in The Wizard of Oz Ray, who was born in 1904 in Boston, Massachusetts, played the Scarecrow, and Hunk the Farmhand in The Wizard of Oz, following the success of the flick. Ray, who was already a booming Broadway star when he was cast in The Wizard of Oz, spent much of his time on stage. He began starring in a nightly live show at the Paramount Theater in New York, which involved him tap dancing alongside the Harry James Band. He also appeared in a slew of Broadway plays like By Jupiter, All American, and Where's Charlie, the latter of which won him the Tony Award for Best Performance by a leading actor in a musical. While he mainly spent his time doing live theater, he did star in a few more on-screen titles like the World War II movie Stage Door Canteen, The Harvey Girls, which saw him reunite with his Wizards of Oz co-star Judy, the biographical musical film Look for the Silver Lining, the movie adaptation of the play Where's Charlie, and the comedy Just You and Me, Kid. He also created and starred in the ABC sitcom Where's Raymond, which went on to be renamed to The Ray Bolger Show. He was married to a woman named Gwendolyn Ricard for 57 years, up until he passed away from bladder cancer in 1987, at age 82. They had no kids together. The Cowardly Lion, played by Bert Lar Bert Lar, who was born in 1895 in New York City, starred as the Cowardly Lion and Zeke the Farmhand in The Wizard of Oz. Like Ray, Burt mainly focused on theater work after that, starring in the Broadway productions of Dewberry Was a Lady, Hotel Paradiso, The Beauty Part, Burlesque, Two on the Isle, Foxy, for which he won the Tony Award for Best Leading Actor in a Musical and A Midsummer Night's Dream over the years. He also acted in the play Waiting for Godot Across Europe, followed by a short-lived Broadway run of it in 1956. He did appear in a few movies and TV shows after The Wizard of Oz, including the musical film Ship Your Worries Away, Ship Ahoy, Meet the People, Always Leave Them Laughing, as well as the comedy Mr. Universe, the movie adaptation of Anything Goes, and the Western film Rosemary. He was married twice. His first wife was dancer Mercedes Delpino, who he wed in 1929 but divorced 10 years later, in 1939. They welcomed a son, named Herbert, together. He then tied the knot with a woman named Mildred Schroeder in 1940. She gave birth to a second son, named John, in 1941, followed by a daughter, named Jane, in 1943. He died in 1967 at age 72, and while the initial cause of death was listed as pneumonia, it was later revealed that he had cancer. Jack Haley, who hails from Boston, Massachusetts, and was born in 1897, famously portrayed the Tin Man and a farmhand named Hickory in The Wizard of Oz. And making the beloved movie was not easy for him. He actually suffered from a severe eye infection during the production, due to the silver paste they used to make him look like he was made from tin, and he had to go under the knife to prevent permanent damage to his eyes. Despite the health scare, his role in Wizard of Oz propelled Jack into megastardom. He went on to star in the musical film Moon Over Miami, the adventure flick Beyond the Blue Horizon, the comedy Take It Big, Mystery One Body Too Many, 
scared stiff in 1945, People Are Funny, and Vacation in Reno. He also had an impressive Broadway career, acting in the shows Higher and Higher, Showtime, and Inside USA over the years. In the late 40s, however, Jack took a break from acting and stepped out of the spotlight for nearly 25 years. He returned to the big screen in 1970 when he starred as Mr. Reese in the movie Norwood, which was directed by his son, Jack Haley Jr. He also appeared in the 1977 musical movie New York, New York, which marked his final role before his passing. He married to a woman named Florence McFadden in 1921, and they welcomed two kids together, Jack, who went on to marry Judy's daughter Liza and a daughter named Gloria. The star died of a heart attack in 1979 at age 81. A post-mortem autobiography called Heart of the Tin Man was released in 2000. Billy Burke, who was born in Washington, D.C. in 1884, appeared in The Wizard of Oz as Glinda, the Good Witch of the North, and by the time she was cast in the movie, she had already been acting for decades. And she certainly didn't slow down afterwards. In the years that followed, she starred in Father of the Bride, Father's Little Dividend, In This Our Life, The Man Who Came to Dinner, the sitcom Doc Corkle, and the Western film Sergeant Rutledge. She was also offered the role of Aunt Pitipat in Gone with the Wind, but turned it down. In addition, she hosted her own immensely popular radio show called The Billy Burke Show, which was followed by a talk show, entitled At Home with Billy Burke during the 50s, making her one of the first female talk show hosts to be featured on television. The Wizards of Oz alum also starred on Broadway, appearing in this rock, Ziegfeld Follies of 1943, and Mrs. January and Mr. X in the years after Wizard of Oz. She married Broadway impresario Florence Ziegfeld in 1914, and together, they had a daughter named Patricia. The actress passed away of natural causes in 1970 at age 95.